Good luck. Alright, so. Um, in previous rounds I've done perhaps more preparation in terms of looking at what my opponent plays than I have done for this game. Uh, lately I've been playing this opening, so I'm going to continue playing it. And we'll see just where this takes us. Um, so I could play my edge pawn to query if he's going to play static rook or swinging rook. Um, I'm hoping for fourth file or third file rook because that's what I've been playing recently. But you never know what you're going to get. Let's see. Um, this is. Hmm. I don't understand the purpose of this move. Wait, have I messed up in some respect? Like, Oh wait, no, okay. The bishop fork that I'm so afraid of is not something that I can realize here. So, namely, if he pushes this fourth file pawn, he can't also drop a bishop onto the same square his pawn occupies. Um, so, we're going to tuck the king into safety and hopefully not fall for the same king rook fork that we fell for on Shogi Wars just the other day. Now, admittedly, in Shogi Wars, uh, those are 10 minute games. A lot of crazy stuff can happen. Um, so I continue waiting for him to. Uh, not to push this pawn, but to push either pawn to the side of this. And as if to suggest that the silver is climbing up. Um, and at which point um, uh, I would push this and try to use my rook to take multiple pawns. I'm more expecting that this silver is going to just move to 5-6 five, uh, five, here. and just sit there for a while, because I've not made any obvious targets just yet. My silver and uh, bishop are still connected. Um, this gold is actually useful over here. Uh, so, this is interesting. At some point, I have to select... Um, Uh, how I'm going to develop the rest of my pieces. So if I push this and they move the silver, I can move my gold. They can move the silver up. I can protect my high Mino. Um, that's one possibility. Oh, so I was mentioning uh, the gold over here is useful because it covers a lot of squares that a rook or a bishop could drop onto someday. Um, um, I 
Yeah, how about this? Since I'm not exchanging silvers, I'm going to push on the second file. So I can push the second and third file pawns and maybe take more than one pawn or otherwise disrupt this part of the castle. Um, if nothing else, this puts more pressure on his position. Alright, so leaving this pawn in front of my rook does no uh does me no benefit. Um Yeah, I'm not sure how this fight's gonna resolve. In other positions it is often useful for the opponent to drop a pawn here. Uh but I guess my opponent thinks they have everything under control. Well, that's interesting. I've just accidentally allowed my opponent to build something kind of like Yagra. Perhaps this is Yagra, and I've just allowed it. Um, hmm. That's not great. So, what can we do? If I had another pawn in hand, there would be some fun things I could do. Um, actually, I could drop a pawn here. If they take, I could take. I'm threatening this. So, this does look fairly ridiculous. But, um, because they're protecting their pawn now, I get this wedge. So we can say that this was maybe deliberate, but not really. So the silver's moved away from the defense of the second file, which is really what I was hoping for. Um, this is not easy. I need this square for my knight. Well, I want the square for my knight, but shit gets cray very quickly once they push this. Um, hmm. On the other hand, if I move the rook in front of the pawn, the rook is trapped, and they just advance this edge pawn and bring the knight out. And the trapped rook perishes. So, I guess this is my best attempt. This is unusual. Um, well, he get. He does get to collect this pawn, doesn't he? Alright, well that's clever. Uh, what can I do? Man, I was hoping to have something, some clever response to this. I have vague pressure, but nothing concrete. But we're gonna stay on the fifth or the fourth row here. Um, 
it still looks perhaps in some way useful to do that, but um, oh, I thought surely he was going to get materialistic and chase this. Oh, he's got other ways to chase the pawn. But uh, he had a really clear-cut way to just snatch it with the rook. Um, instead, if I push on the second file, this gets complicated again. I don't see any reason to simplify. So, yeah, let's add more pressure. Maybe break this open in our favor. I've never played a twisting rook opening, but I think this is the notion, is that the rook goes up and back and around and just keeps dancing, making random threats and forcing the opponent to make structural changes in response to each threat. Um, so, yeah, this could get interesting. Now, the thing I don't like, well, two things. One, my king is on the diagonal that's prone to this bishop whenever the bishop does land on 5-5, five five, and someday it will make it there. Uh, two, um, just not having a concrete plan here. It's kind of sad. Um, okay, we're going to protect stuff in this general area. That's a waiting move while we wait to see how our opponent, if they're going to play the king between the golds, we're going to see if that happens. If they bring the king the other direction, maybe we don't swing the rook over this way. But if they play king 4-8, uh, uh, rook 2-4 is coming. Oh, right. They could chase down this pawn. Uh, might not be the best use of their time and energy, but they could chase it down. So... I could do something about them chasing this. Um, I could play rook two four or rook four four. If rook four four, they could open the diagonal, and stuff gets fun. Um, it's not that fun. I lose my rook if I do anything clever. If I don't do anything clever, um, we just have an open diagonal. Which someday is never is not going to favor me. Um, huh. I could block my bishop since they've blocked theirs. Oh, uh, they're looking to retreat the silver. Um, or to bring up a gold or something. The other thought I was rook 2 4 and then push, and this gets nowhere. Why am I considering this? I don't know. Um, they might also have designs of just trapping my rook where it is. This is tricky. All right, there's a generic waiting move if there was one. It's useful in the respect that, like, maybe my knight will want to go there. Maybe my bishop will want to go there. Um, right. So here I'd intended to sack this pawn. <sighs> Is it still a good idea? I don't know. Was it ever a good idea? Probably not. All right, we're just going to sack the pawn for no real tangible benefit. 
Um, I mean, what's he going to do with a pawn anyway? So I continue choosing not to trap my rook, choosing not to trap my bishop. Um, he is under some vague pressure, but it's a difficult position for me. I guess what I'm counting on is that um, his king is still in the center. Perhaps someday it will become an easier target than it is right now. But yeah, having to keep this fourth rank clear at all times is challenging. Um... I might spend a move just shifting the lance out of range of the bishop. It's just, I cannot find a constructive move here. Anything I do to try to make progress ruins my position. I could tuck the king back. But that is weakening my castle. So, um, hmm. I guess the reality here is that eventually bishops ex uh, will get exchanged somehow, and um, we both need to be ready for whenever that's going to happen. Um, Alright, so this is the other thing I was thinking about. So if they do this, do I play knight to 1-3 or knight to 3-3? Three, three? Um, one three, I'm losing the knight. Um, well, no, one three, the knight is in harm's way, and my bishop is active. On three three, I've blocked my bishop. Um, and I don't really have a way to unblock it. Uh, I might not have to make this decision yet because pushing this pawn seems adequate. They will push here. I'm sorry, they'll take, uh, if I do rook takes, they could push here. Or they could just force me to retreat. Um, I 
I think this is the only active way for me to play here. Uh, I, uh, and as I say that, I'm now realizing my rook is in danger. Um, it's only a rook. Who needs the rook? Now they're not going to take the rook. They're going to do something about this gold. And now I have a pawn in hand again. So tactical possibilities are once more a thing. Um, not saying this is easy, but things could happen. Retreating the rook is just cowardly. Right back we go. Not sure that I can make anything happen with the pawn, but uh, it's a thought that counts. Maybe I need to move um, one of these generals. Um, hmm. That intends to drop a pawn somewhere. So if I move my bishop to try to activate it, they could move the gold to try to trap my bishop. I sack my rook for a silver, and then I promote my bishop, and their king is still in the center. This is one possibility. My bishop's not doing anything on this closed diagonal, so let's see how this... Oh, yeah, they could use their bishop to oppose my bishop. Sure. Um... Again, I could sack for the silver and then exchange bishops. Um, or I could sack the bishop and take the silver. And they promote. That's not as good. My silver is sad. My silver wanted to be part of this game. Okay, uh, that's possible too. I guess we'll take this. I think I see where this is going. So I've uh, activated my bishop. My bishop is active. And now it is captured. And I've taken a silver for my bishop. And other pieces are going to be exchanged while their king still sits in the center of the board. And hopefully this will work out. Because there wasn't a whole lot else I could do. We're going to take this lance, and now try to come up with a useful idea. They don't have a knight. Uh, 
これより秒読みに入ります Okay, we'll hit the standing target. I've now blocked my rook. Not intentionally, but um, yeah, that was... So there is an awkward moment now that it is possible for them to push this pawn on my king's file, on the rook file. Um, still, this might have been the best square for my lance. Um, Interesting. I should have seen this. Given how much is it at stake here, that would have been a good thing to see. Um. I guess we'll do the best we can to trap their king. Yep, I saw that. So, it's not just my pieces that can trap the king. Also, my opponent's pieces can help enclose it. So, by forcing them to put down some more pawns, this will make it more difficult for their king to escape one day. Um... So my big plan here was to take the bishop and then place it down and try to win material. Um... I'm not sure if I have anything better to do than that plan. Um, retreating the rook and then trying to hit the knight might also make sense in a crazy way. Yeah, like giving up an entire rook is a lot. So this might be the saner course of action. Um, so I have a choice. Do I take the bishop? Almost certainly. Um, or do I do something else? If I do something else, uh, my rook might get to promote one day. A promoted rook is worth a lot. So. Yeah, I guess we're going to promote my rook. Or at least try. Right. So they defend their knight. Now I get this bishop. And after I take the bishop, I drop it back here and promote it in the center. And they're just going to fork my king and bishop. And it's going to be sad times. And I'm not sure what else I can do. Oh, I could drop a pawn to hit the knight. I don't have to take this bishop, but... Um, hmm. That's interesting. And strange. Very strange. <sighs> Giving up an entire bishop. But fine. This actually... <sighs> I like taking material. Because being down material is a very uncomfortable situation. Um... Okay, they've committed their bishop. Uh, 
I'm not sure if that's where they wanted to put it. Yep, so they can start taking pieces, I can start taking pieces. We'll have a peace capturing race, unless I want to protect this first. Can anything positive come from defense? Almost never. But giving up entire pieces sucks too. Um, so I should take this bishop before it's too late. Uh, then I can take this knight. We'll find ways to activate my pieces yet. So next threat is either Lance takes or Token takes. All right. Uh, as tempting as it is, and it is very sorely tempting to snap this bishop immediately, I need to continue attacking the king. Um... So we're just going to try to be single-minded about this. Just attack, attack, attack. Can continue adding more fuel to the fire here as my army vanishes. Um, This is super awkward, but generals are going to be needed elsewhere, so I think this is the right way to attack. Uh, the idea is I'm going to sacrifice the bishop right in front of the king, and hope that somehow this makes it easier to checkmate, because a silver is often more useful for a checkmate than a bishop is. Um, not always, but often, so that's the plan. A plan B is just take the rook, um, assuming, like, he, uh, doesn't move it. But I'm assuming he will move it, or do something to defend it. And if he burns a tempo defending the rook, then maybe I have some sort of mating threat. If he just takes my gold, I think I take the rook and promote my bishop. Um, but otherwise, I think I gain a tempo. So most probable is just moving the rook over to hit the bishop, or just adding another rook in defense. And I don't really believe in my attack, but um, I have to try.
It'd be nice to move my token so I could drop a knight where it currently is. I don't have any sideways moving attackers. That could be a problem. Um, I'm not sure what to do about that problem. So, at least this attack is in some way inspired by um, the Road to Shodan video series on YouTube. Uh, episode 1 is entitled, Weak King Falls Easily. And that seems to be the mood I'm in lately, is that, you know, if weak kings really fall easily, then I should just be able to sack sack mate. It should just be there. How hard can it be to checkmate? Um, I think I might need to take the bishop instead of taking the rook. I think I might need to take this bishop. Because my own king is overwhelmed. And I don't think this rook drop helps his situation much, if at all. Really don't want to commit my silver to defense, but um, it's a hard position. Actually, all of my other pieces are quite useful for attacking, so yes, I'm going to do this. Moving my existing silver also merited thought. I've been thinking about that the past few minutes, too. Um, I just don't see that working. Um, I think I need two silvers for my king to have any chance of staying alive. Um... Candidate moves, bishop takes rook, silver, or lance drop. Uh, any others? No. Taking the rook looks very, very, very tempting. I don't understand why. I just cannot see how to continue this at all. Oh my god, rook takes? Are you serious? Okay, we have just gone from crazy into a new category entirely. Um, it's tempting to do rook takes, but this gives me more tactics. 
Why would you do that? I don't understand. We're going to sacrifice this again. We didn't have to go here, but we went here, so let's try to enjoy the view. Um, so we've committed his silver here, but further my bishop covers this square. Uh, okay. I seem to be walking into stuff. This is not great. Um, if my king moves aside, they drop a gold, I take... I'm so confused. This is not a good idea. I could not help myself. In Byoyomi, I could not have read that out. Um, I was unsure whether or not I got mated uh, by moving to the side. So instead we get this. So they could check me two different ways or check with the rook. Um... If they do this, my king could take the pawn. Again, they have checking moves. Have I missed something entirely? Probably. Um, what have I missed? Perhaps my king is not safe up here. Um, yes, I have to retreat, or at least, a, well, attempts to retreat are futile. Um, okay. Yeah, that'll do it. Well played. All right, good game. All right, so uh, let's see. Wow, that was exciting. Um, uh, yeah, that was special. Uh, I'm not sure if I'd run the other way if I would have survived that. If I'd just taken the free rook. Oh, okay, well... 
<laughs> I do wonder what happened this game. I say that every game, and I always mean it. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, when I pushed this, this uh, got problematic. Probably I should have uh, moved the rest of my pieces around and tried to break on the second file instead. Well, this is not even when I pushed it, but um, yeah. Um, just thought, lance him immediately instead of placing the bishop. Yeah, that's probably accurate. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, that's a good point, too. Like, once the pawn is pushed, okay, yes, it makes room for the bishop, but then the knight can no longer use the square. It's forever a slow piece. Yeah. Uh... Uh, maybe if I'd been more patient, uh, I could have, uh, found... I can't type at all today, can I? There it is. Uh, yeah, it's just sitting here right in the middle. Uh, center, uh... It's, uh, well guarded, um, but, uh, easily surrounded. I cannot spell at all. I apologize to those, uh, yeah. Uh, dropping the pawn against the knight. Slower than taking the bishop. Okay, I guess we'll get there. Yeah. I would be scared about... Uh, oh. Oh, goodness. Did I miss this thing? Again. Um, how many times am I going to miss this idea? Uh, I did see the idea. I just didn't think it would work. But I was considering it in a different move order where I played the bishop move first. Um... Yeah, here this still could have been very interesting, because I could sack the bishop for the silver. Or, yeah, I mean, there's this too. Um, yeah, I do wonder, so if we'd seen this, like, how does this resolve? I mean, I'm down material, but... Okay. It's not so easy for me to break in. Oh. Right. Oh! Well, yeah, I was... Okay, the knight doesn't go very far. So I was waiting for the king to move for me to try a move like this. And then I decided to go for it anyway, which is ill-fated. Uh, so then we're going to catch up with Transport's comment at some point about dropping the pawn against the knight early on. It was just super slow. Um, so yeah, we just shuffled a lot, really. Yeah, I... By breaking on the third file early, I made this much harder on myself. Um, uh, that was hard. Probably I bungled some tactic here. Yeah. So I wonder, like, 
Is this so bad? Uh -oh. hmm. I cannot spell. Um. Like, here I'm giving up material, but, um, it could be interesting, too. Um, like, I wonder, this gains a lance, but, um, yeah. Oh, the silver drop. That makes sense, too. Although I do have to defend against him winning the knight immediately. If he gets a knight in combination with the bishop, that gets really scary. Um, although I guess he's getting the knight anyway. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, this is a problem. Um, so then we need to throw this in. And after we exchange silver and gold, then we can take the lance, and hopefully it works out. Is King super exposed? Yeah. But he's up an entire rook, but, um... Huh. I'm running out. I I didn't have that many attacking pieces to begin with, so yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I exchange the silver for the gold. I pick up a free lance, but um, see, they get a very heavy attack. It's not a fast one, but they have quite a bit to punch with. Um. This pawn here is nice because it limits both my gold and silver, so my silver can't do anything useful. And it's a nice lever for their knight and other pieces to start marching in. Although this is really far from my king, this is not so far. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. But yeah, we found this tricky little tactic. And you're mentioning that dropping the pawn was slower than just taking the bishop in. Yeah. Uh, so potentially we should just take this here. Uh, hmm. And I think I'm also running out of... Well, it's not so bad, is it? Um, this might be better. Because of fun tactics. I didn't see this idea. This is kind of nice. A few moves later? Okay. Yeah. I still like this, though. But, um... Yeah, this is too complicated. Uh... Yeah, oh! Oh, well, okay. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Hmm. 
So, okay. Yeah, my bishop drop here is not great. Um, so, still retreating this makes some sense. Um, but okay, here... Um, This makes some... well, not necessarily here where I'm giving up the silver, but somewhere around here. Rook takes 3-2, pawn 3-8. I don't... I'm too tired to figure this out. Uh, take the promoted lance. Uh, yeah. And then just take here. Um... So... Uh, yeah. Interesting. So we've saved... Well, okay, and he responds by taking my lance instead of attacking. Um, I guess we drop the bishop again? Yeah, bishop 7-9, rook 3-6. Oh, rook 3-6. Um, hmm. Hmm. Let's, let's take a look. Oh, rook 3-6. Yes. Yeah, I can't even count. But I was thinking like 8-7-6. And I remember the Shogi board has like 9-8-7-6 right on the side of it. So, uh, oh. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe the bishop drop first. So I wanted to, because my opponent had suggested rook 3-6, I wanted to look at that first. But, um, yeah, this is really where I wanted to go first, out of your two suggestions. And, um, mm -hmm. wait, can anything attack my bishop or trap it? Yes, no, they can't, they could trap my bishop, but it's going to cost them. Um, this is such a weird position. Okay, but no, I do want to escape my bishop now. Silver 5-7. Or lance 5-7. Yeah, I was thinking lance 5-7, and then seeing the king move over scared me a bit. Um, yeah, I like silver 5-7. That's interesting. So if the king pursues the bishop, we could consider taking multiple generals and see how this turns out. Um, maybe there's some other tactic here, too. Now granted, like, they get the bishop and the silver. Um, the king ends up here, the rook ends up there. I don't see any trick at the very end of this. Hmm. Uh, I guess we'll take without promoting. And I was just hoping there's a tactic here somewhere. Oh, promote? Hmm. Yeah, I guess the promotion might make some sense, too. Um, 
because without promoting, it doesn't seem to get very far. <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, so this is what we're looking at. I'm uh, just not seeing a knockout tactic here. They have two bishops and a gold. <sighs> Maybe rook three six here. Yeah, I don't know. That looks complicated. It's, uh, only looks safe, uh, because, uh, you don't have bishop plus knight in hand. Otherwise, I'd be really spooked here. Um, one of the sides has a ton of initiative. See, this is where just like my chess brain kicks in and thinks I only have two attacking pieces. And like if I'm running out of attackers, I don't understand the concept of initiative. I tend to believe that like this king can defend itself forever. I mean, you saw me march my king all the way up the board in our game. It was something I tried to do, but... um it's just that I don't understand, and I'm still working on it, I'm still practicing Sume, but yeah, you're right, that this there's definitely some initiative, it's just I struggle to understand it. Um, so, okay, uh, if I take with this silver, I get forked. Or if I take the silver, I get forked. So I have to take this way. And it's just really difficult for my lone gold to do anything. Um, um, Yeah, this, this gets more complicated. Yeah, you, you might not want to do that immediately. Um, so many pieces. Maybe use them. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> it is a bit dangerous to just... Uh, move around pieces while you're under attack. But yeah, there's some concept of an initiative here. I'm not even sure that like this is the best way they could have defended anyway. But it's this is certainly more complicated than the game. There's just always lots of possibilities. Um, and 15 minute Shogi, even with the 60 second Byoyomi, isn't always enough. Particularly if you don't, like, drill Sume all the time. I know I say I'm working on it, I am working on it, but my progress is anemic at best. Um, but yeah, the more you practice Sume, the more you appreciate just the rest of the attack. Um, so, I need to practice more. Um, so yeah, this is all kicked off by this here. Um, as opposed to what I did in the game. 
Uh, and Transport had another comment earlier. This, he made two comments. One was, just take the bishop. I just had this meltdown here. Um, um, and he agreed with the earlier comment that taking the rook later could just win. Played the opening better than Captain. Though neither side seemed to have a... Okay, I see. Yeah, maybe. I'm not sure. I think I could have played even better. Um, I just tend to float um, at some point. So, I didn't think... Uh... <laughs> uh... The rook sack on 3 3 was good. Yeah. Yeah, I really, really was surprised that he moved the horse away so I couldn't take the horse. I didn't think he had time for this. Or at least this is complicated, and just giving up the horse seemed much saner. But what do I know? I'm just a one don. I've, I know how to find some practical complications, but boy, I need to work on reading and need to work on Yosa and all that fun stuff. Um, uh, uh, hand over the host status and ask, like, anything you want to review? <laughs> Because, yeah, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if I had checkmate here at some point. Um, I was so proud of my... Well, okay, yeah, dropping the rook back one square was stupid. I should have dropped it back further, but whatever. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't play the opening too badly. It was hard to find moves for both players. Um, and part of that's because of his choice of castle... It means that my attack's getting hit very hard when it does hit, but it might take a very long time to hit because this king's a sitting duck in the center. Ah, uh, yeah, so he played knight 3-7. thinking knight or gold oh um I'm trying to remember at some point I expected your rook to take my pawn um, just like swing over and do that um, Uh, hmm. I'm not sure taking the rook is okay. Uh, um, move uh, seemed much safer. Yeah. Because, I mean, what are you going to do at this point? Um, I guess we go up, right? Mm. 
This just seems really complicated. Um, yeah. And maybe it's playable, but uh, I just I don't understand it. Um, okay, so how do we attack this silver? Can I get away with this? It seems like the sort of thing I should be able to get away with. Although he's got a rook, but if you're having to use the rook here to defend the silver, maybe something's not right. Hmm. Uh, actually, I have an intermezzo too. That would be special. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, at least this uh, gets quite complicated. Um, maybe it's okay, but I I don't know. But yeah, my expectation was just that the rook was going to come over, snatch the pawn, and then go back to the eighth file, back to attacking my king. Since I couldn't find an attacking idea. You had time to do whatever. Oh. Uh, a branch here. What is the purpose of the... Um, okay. Now that makes sense. Hmm. Yeah, so this is pretty direct. Um, maybe I have to do this anyway? Oh. Oh, but then you could just open this diagonal. Um, I'm not sure if I can defend this. Yeah, so my rook is kind of useless. Well, yeah, I'm not sure that I can defend this. That pawn drop would have been very nice. And um, I guess maybe specifically here, maybe I have this move. It holds on for a little while, but um, it's not easy. Um, <laughs> maybe the maybe he saw this during the game, and just had forgotten right now that he'd seen it earlier. Because this knight move is actually pretty resourceful. Because um, only the silver or the pawn, not both, can occupy this square. If the silver moves, this pawn hangs. And if this pawn moves, the silver hangs. Um, so probably he saw something like this during the game. But yeah, I guess this is why you generally don't put this pawn directly in front of the silver. It's, uh, I mean, sometimes it could be useful, but um, uh, I'm trying to think which piece I would even take if he offered both of them at the same time. Um,
yeah. Oh, this, yeah, I could try to defend with the silver, too. Hmm. I don't know how to evaluate that. Um... Wait, no, but then he can try to break on the edge file and my bishop's trapped. That's complicated. Um, I'm almost certain that if he plays this knight up, I should take one of the two hanging pieces. Um, well, so say we do see this. I take here. You take my lance. And I'm hitting your rook. So... Something like this. Oh, you meant for him, the silver up. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So that pawn drop looks very tempting, but I'm not sure that actually works any better than the game line. Um... Oh, right. Uh, uh surprised you did this. All right. This is a bit slow. Uh, horses are valuable, but uh, so are kings. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, this is, it is so slow. So, that greatly surprised me. I thought I would have... I thought you'd just leave the horse there and let me take it later. Oh! Let's see. So you just completely missed this bishop out drop idea. It's easy to miss. Um, especially because, like, you think, well, he's the only one attacking, right? Not quite. Um, oh, but you were meaning you could promote the bishop on 3-3. Three, three. Oh, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, calculating if I had mates. Yeah. Probably somewhere. There's so many pieces. Um, I think uh, when I took the gold, uh, that might have been too uh, too slow. But uh, I don't know. This is so sharp. Yeah. Guess I'll load the uh, Kifu into an engine to figure this stuff out. It's like way over my head. I mean, I tried to find, figure it out in the game, but it was just too much. Oh, this only copies part of the Kifu if we're on move 85. No, copies. Full Kifu's been copied in Shogi Gui. We can analyze that at a later date and time. Yeah, uh, so I guess we compliment. Yeah. Uh, huh. For the most part, they did it. Their attack pretty well. The problem is, if I do, if I analyze this as long as I want to, I want to analyze this at least ten seconds per position, 
There are 100 moves in this game. I don't want to extend their analysis for another 15 minutes. And I don't want the stream to go offline while we're doing the analysis. So, Plus, it's not that interesting um, in the, from a learning perspective. It's exciting to see how it turns out, but I'll run the analysis later with the engine. Unless our opponent continues on and insists on continuing to look at all this and um, it's just not going to make for the greatest video to watch, but that's okay. He only has one diagonal piece. Yeah, so far. So, um, yeah, this is complicated. I don't know what to suggest. But fortunate for me, he doesn't have a knight. Because, like, well, he doesn't have a bishop either. So the two best pieces to destroy this castle are not in his possession. Yeah. yeah I'm not going to try to encourage him to go into Flights of Fancy, because I'm sure this gets very complicated. Um... Kifu is available on 81 Dojo. I'll put it in my Discord as well. Um, yeah, you should have some idea of how to defend this. Oh, his engine claims that I have a win here. Nice. Uh, okay, wow. So... Do I take like this now? Surely I take the rook, no? Um. I'm not even using an engine. He's able to... Oh. Ha. Mine also says you're winning. I have no idea. None whatsoever. <laughs> this is why I say leave this to the engines. Because what your thoughts are and what my thoughts are... Um, are, like... There's nothing in common. The engine can accommodate us all day, but uh, what I'm, what I would suggest, and what you would suggest, yeah. Well, okay, so I'm like out of no pawns. Don't take this way, do they? Um. Yeah, so this is... Huh, how does this work? Well, that's nice. Oh. Wow, that's tricky. But also beautiful. So, yeah, like... I'm going to intersperse all these strange comments and, this, like, I'm <laughs> usually in cramped spaces with, like that, with all my pieces, there has to be a mate. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, the sack on 2-7 there, or rather on 8-3. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this gold drop right there is clever. Wait, oh! 
Oh, this is sharp. Huh, what? What the heck? Uh, is this right? Okay, yeah. That's... Yeah, there you go. Same mate. Second verse, same as the first. No need for a bishop sack this time. Yeah, that's cool seeing with the support of a pawn, the rook can take and promote and go back and stuff like that. The rook's a more powerful attacking piece than I give it credit for. You only have to sacrifice two pieces for uh, nothing for this to work. So, yeah. This is this is the hard sort of thing for people to analyze together. Uh, it's much easier for the engine to suggest what should happen. Yeah, so this is his concept of why he sacked the bishop. Um, yeah, or he wants to. So, yeah. in general, I'm not the greatest at finding my own checkmates or at finding my opponent's checkmates, so it's not a bad idea to just throw the dice against me and see how things play out. Because almost always, I will fall into whatever you're threatening. Um, whether or not you'll see it is a different matter, but... Yeah. Uh, he made the right practical move during the game. But engines will disagree. Yeah, so... And this... Me taking the gold here wasn't a variation. Uh, his engine recommends this move instead. Um... My engine would probably also recommend this move instead, but, but like this is the point at which like I can't add anything valuable to the conversation other than ooh, that's really special. It is cool to see just how many lines there are, but uh end games are something only engines can master. Um you can become great at the end game, but engines will always be better. Unless you have a bug, but um, the best engine probably does not have a bug. Yeah, so, and I'm sure he's looking at all these other things. Um, there's tons of variations here. It's just I can't really add anything to the conversation. So, um, yeah, the silver drop on. 5-7 versus Lance drop on 5-7. Who knows? Um, and whether or not, like, some lines, maybe I was able to take the Rook for free, and I was able to survive that, I guess. Um, my Sume ability is nowhere near for me to be able to say, like, I can survive this or I cannot survive that. Unless it's extremely obvious what's going on. Um, so it's really rare. Like, I think I had a previous uh, tourney game, a teaching ladder game, where I announced that I had mate and my opponent just stepped out of it. And I'm like, oh. So it's not uncommon for me to mess that up. Um, yeah. I cannot spell. There we go. Um, so, I... Well, I did ask if he had any other comments, questions, thoughts, stuff. Yeah, maybe dropping this silver was too heavy. I thought I needed it. Engines will say one way or the other, but, like, it's pretty sure that... 
my castle was doomed without it. So uh, that's why I added this. I miscounted. Uh, yeah, I thought he had four generals, or I miscounted this. So, I imagined a mate that would have required four generals instead of three. I forgot I was capturing one of them in this sequence and that it cannot be reused after being captured. Yeah, that's my mistake. So, I'd seen like this, 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 this. Uh, oh, right, he would drop a pawn here. Yeah, no, you're right. And then this, I guess, and then another pawn. Oh. Uh, so I can't do this either. So I have to go this way. Um, yeah, so... Oh, he's still got the freaking mate here. Wow. Wait, so how did I... how is this possible? Um... Am I really so blind? Like... What the heck? Uh, so we have the pawn drop. Jeez. Okay, so... I forgot that the pawns could be used effectively in this attack. I had somehow phantomed that he had an extra general. Or two. But also, yeah, if he just uses the pawns instead, he's still got this. Uh, That's nuts. Yeah. But yeah, at this point I'm hosed. Unless I, like, block my second rank somehow and escape his mate. But that's hard. Um... Uh... Well, okay, does he have another comment? Because, like, he's saying, I'm sure you had mate, I'm sure you had mate. He might be right. There's... how do I add to this? Um, if you took the bishop... <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I guess maybe I don't need the bishop to... or don't need another bishop to give mate here. Yeah, well done. Uh, thanks for the game. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense uh, attacking like this. Uh, I forget how many rounds are left. Uh... 
<laughs> I don't remember how many rounds we have left in this thing, but not too many. Yeah, we'll continue to face opponents with similar winning records, so... Um, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, you could very well be right. I'm still working on elementary mates, so, like, anything that's going to crop up in a real turning to master game is, like, way over my head. We saw last week, uh, our last tourney to master game, I pulled off some insane, crazy mate against a 3-don. That's basically never happening again. Uh, yep, thanks for the game, have a nice day. Um, it's unlikely we're going to see that happen here. Um, yeah, what an adventure. <laughs>